Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about embolism. So what is embolus? It is a detached intravascular. It can be solid, liquid or gaseous mass that is carried by blood to a site distant from its point of origin. In this video, we will discuss about pulmonary embolism. We will discuss about systemic thromboembolism, air embolism, fat embolism and amniotic fluid embolism. Now going to the pulmonary embolism. So the pulmonary embolism, it originates mostly from the deep vein thrombosis. Okay. And uh, this is mostly present in the lower limbs. The thrombi get de de uh, detached from it, forms the emboli, enters into the larger channels, into the inferior vena cava, and then into the right side of the heart. And from where it enters into the pulmonary arterial vasculature. Now from the pulmonary arterial vasculature, it can remain in the main pulmonary artery okay, or it can enter into the pulmonary artery bifurcation where it is known as saddle embolus. There is a term known as paradoxical embolism. Here the embolus which was present in the right side of the heart okay, goes from to the left side of the heart via the interatrial or interventricular defect and here from here from the left uh, side of the heart it can enter into the systemic circulation this thing is known as paradoxical embolism this picture shows the saddle embolus which is present at the bifurcation this is the bifurcation we can see and this is the embolus present over here now what is the consequence of the pulmonary embolism? So if this is the vessel and here is the embolus. This is the embolus obstructing it, occluding it. So ideally what happens is the area supplied by this vessel gets necrosed by ischemia. Okay, ischemic necrosis takes place, infarction takes place. But in the case of uh, pulmonary, it doesn't go into pulmonary infarction because the lung has dual blood supply it also has supply from the bronchial circulation and therefore infarction doesn't take place however due to occlusion this vessel gets ruptured and a pulmonary hemorrhage takes place also in some cases where the emboli is large enough it can lead to corpulmonale which is the right-sided heart failure now it can be acute in nature if the embolus is large enough or it can also be chronic in nature okay now going to another type of thromboembolism which is systemic thromboembolism now systemic thromboembolism arises from emboli present in the arterial circulation or from the cardiac origin okay so if you uh, it arises from intracardiac thrombi, from aortic aneurysms, from any uh, valvular vegetations. These can get detached and they can enter into the systemic circulation and then can be deposited into lower limbs, into the brain, intestines, kidneys. This is known as systemic thromboembolism. Now going to a very important uh, embolism seen in mostly road traffic accident after road traffic accident known as fat embolism. It mostly occurs after fractures of the long bones like femur which have a fatty marrow and also after soft tissue trauma and burns. Here the fat from the marrow gets uh, entrapped into the vessel and enter the uh, vascular channels. Now the clinical features will be pulmonary insufficiency, neurological symptoms and also anemia and thrombocytopenia can also occur in such patients. This is a picture here we can see this is a vessel over here. This is a vessel. This hole is a vessel and the central part this is the embolism present inside it. So what, uh, how does uh, the clinical features take place? What happens is fat microemboli, they enter into the circulation. They can enter into pulmonary circulation. It can enter into cerebral circulation. 
and they release free fatty acids over there and cause local injury they cause occlusion also but they also cause local injury to the endothelium and platelet activation which can further lead to thrombus formation over there also for the diagnosis of uh, fat embolism we should know that lipids when we process the tissue they are dissolved by various solvents which we use so for microscopic demonstration of the fat we need frozen sections or special stains which uh, are used for the fat now going to the air embolism air embolism uh, is gas bubbles if they are present within the circulation it is known as air embolism they also give to uh, frothy masses lead to presence of frothy masses now how the air is introduced into the circulation it can be introduced during a surgery like bypass surgery neurosurgery especially in the sitting position during obstetric or laparoscopic procedures or as a result of any chest wall injury the circulation can get uh, uh, air entrapped within it there is a special type of air embolism that is known as decompression sickness so what is it it is a particular form of gas embolism in which individuals they experience sudden uh, it occurs when individual experience sudden decrease in the atmospheric pressure so uh, mostly take place in scuba or deep sea divers during uh, intra construction workers uh, they are at risk of this decompression sickness so what happens is the person goes into the like it dive he dives into the uh, during deep sea dive and the air here is breathed at a high pressure so what happens the increased amount of gases like especially nitrogen get dissolved into the blood or tissues ideally a person should not ascend too rapidly but if the diver ascends too rapidly the nitrogen which was dissolved in the blood or tissues comes out of the solution into the tissues and in the blood it gets separated from its dissolved state now this rapid formation of the gas bubbles take place if it takes place within skeletal muscle or joints it is responsible for a painful condition known as bends okay if in the lungs uh, it enters into the vasculature it causes respiratory distress here the term chokes is used and chronic form of decompression sickness is known as caisson's disease in this there are multiple pre uh, presence of gas emboli in the skeletal system which leads to ischemic necrosis there are multiple foci of ischemic necrosis in various bones like femur or tibia now going to a la uh, last uh, amniotic fluid embolism it is a very rare condition and is a very ominous complication of labor it is characterized by severe dyspnea cyanosis and shock uh followed by neurological impairment seizures coma even if the patient survives this uh the first uh, uh crisis the patient can under uh, lead into pulmonary edema and dic the disseminated intravascular coagulation it can develop it's a very ominous complication of the labor so what happens the uh, what happens is the causes the amniotic fluid or the fetal tissue gets uh, infused into the maternal circulation via tear in the placental membranes or due to rupture of the uterine veins during labor uh, these get ruptured and amniotic fluid or fetal tissue can enter into the maternal circulation what we will see in the vessels is presence of squamous cells shed from the fetal skin its lanigo hair the fat from the vernix caesiosa the mucin the gastrointestinal uh, tract uh, epithelium in the maternal pulmonary vasculature these all can enter and cause emboli over there here we can see this is a picture this is picture showing typically this is the 
vessel this is the maternal vessel and this is the presence of the fetal this is the fetal uh, epithelial cells are present over here this was all about the embolism do like share and subscribe to my channel 